Okay, well, we're here with the legendary Pete Matthews. Um, not known just for his wheel building uh, expertise, but also for some of his races. Um, so before we actually get onto the wheel building and his expertise in that way, can you just first of all tell us how did you get into cycling in the first place? Cycling, I wanted a bike. I had a bike, three wheeler when I was a kid, when I was like four or five years of age, and then nothing. <clears throat> and um, I wanted a bike from like nine or ten, and never got one. And uh, I used to borrow the kids in the street, borrow their bike, but I kept falling off them because I couldn't ride a two wheeler. And I eventually learned to ride it. And um, I was in bed one night. It was in the summer of '55. And um, it was a Wednesday night or a Thursday night. I remember this right back. And my mum and dad shouted up the stairs, come down, see what I've got for you. So I uh, went downstairs and there was a little Royal Enfield in the kitchen. Right, okay. Um, second hand. Four, how old, how, how, old was you? how old was you here? I was 11. 11 years old, okay. So uh, my eyes lit up and I thought, oh, brilliant. <clears throat> Next day... My feet never touched the floor coming home from school. I wanted to get out on that bike and it lashed down. And I thought, this, that, that's, that's a swine. That was a Thursday night. Did the same the next night, which was Friday. It lashed down again. All as I did was look at the bike sitting in the uh, kitchen. Oh. Saturday, I, I went out on it. As soon as I got up, I had breakfast, went out on the bike and um, came back, had something to eat. Went back out again, came back, did that every day when I was off. Right. Plus after school, and I saved up then until I was 13, which was two years, to get a racer, which was a Rally Super Lenton, which right, was £22.12 okay. and eight in 1956. Okay. And it had no gears. It was just a plain, single free. There was a fixed wheel cog on the other side. And then <clears throat> all the rest of the money that they used to go for running errands for neighbours and everything else. I bought gears, I had four gears on it. Then I got a dynamo, a saddle bike, oh, everything, everything. And from then on, everything went, all the money I had went on bikes. On bikes, right, okay. Um, so how, how, how did you actually progress from, you know, you actually doing your rally and doing it up as much as you can into actual physical well, racing? We had, a, we had a bungalow in Logheads, which okay. is North Wales. Right. And um, my uncle used to go out. My nan, it was my nan's and granddad's who bought it. But they lived with us, so we lived with them. Every Sunday, uh, we'd go out. I'd go out, hail, rain or snow, and with a couple of mates. And we'd go to bungalow. My uncle would get the bus. He'd have baked egg and beans and sausages and toast and everything on for us. And we'd drive back. And then eventually, we, we'd go further afield. And then... We used to get the boat, the ferry, Liverpool to Birkenhead, and there was a lot of people on the boat in clubs. And they used to say, do you want to join our club, join our club? And I, I, di I didn't bother. And we got my first job, and I used to go to Harry Quinn's for my lunch. Okay. So there was two guys who were in our club that worked there, and we used to go for lunch, leave me bike in Harry Quinn's. We'd go up, have our uh, fish fingers, chips and beans, and then I'd go back to work, and they said, why don't you come out with the club? So uh, I said, yeah, where are you meeting? The boat, half past eight, Sunday. Where are you going? Glass Frin, which was down by Betsy Coward. All right, okay. So no, I Betsy Coward used to jump off the bridge there. Right. <laughs> so I, I was, I that, was 15 by now. Right. And I knew Betsy Coward and all around North Wales because my uncle would get a car out for, for the summer when we were in the bungalow. And I knew all those roads, Langall and Landudno, Betsy Coward, Ballet, all those places. So they said, we're going glass for And I said, OK. So I went with them and we went over to Denby, Sportsman's Pass, down to um, the A5. Then we turned left, went to glass for in, beans and egg on toast, pot of tea, came back over the Kerrigs, which is hilly. And there was a guy called Ernie Midgley with us and he was a second category. Now, I was 15, so I knew nothing right. about racing. And... He was a second category, and he went, and he's a second cat. Well, I didn't know what a second cat was. It was one below a... Sorry, third. so for viewers that don't know, second cat... is one below a first cat, which was the, the top 
Top regards to racing, yeah, it's a category. That was the top yeah. category, yeah. category one. He was category two. Yeah, so yeah. to get from category three, he had to win races or be right. up there. Yes. He had to get places. So we came up this hill out of Ruthing called the Bulk, and it's about two and a half mile. Right. And it's it was a bit of a leg break. And I had a five speed bike at the time because I'd saved up and got an Aussie hill and frame, and it had alloy wheels, I'd solely rally off. And um, <clears throat> Ernie put the hammer down, as we'd say, and I, I eventually ended up on his wheel and I clung and clung and clung to his wheel, suffering like a dog, all the way up till we got near the top. And the last bit, he, he, I think he basically jumped me. Right. Because he was about 20, Ernie. Right, So from okay. 15 to 20 and never ridden a race, that was quite a big thing. Yeah. So when we went to the club, on the Monday night, either that week or the week after, Norman Roberts, who was a massive, massive help in our club, he did massive amounts of uh, entering races and coaching us and stuff. And he worked in the bike shop and he would help you out for everything. And these guys, Norman said, right, anyone for the Merseyside Junior Championships? So I never opened my mouth. And then the, the, these guys were saying, I'll ride, I'll ride, I'll ride. And um, Amy and another guy, Jack, Jackie Higginbottom, who was on the ride, said, uh, why don't you put Pete in? He's all right. I remember, he's all right. He's all right, brilliant. Okay. So Norman said, well, why, what, what, what? He said, well, he hung on to me up the bulk. He went, oh, okay. So I said, well, what do we do? He said, bring five shilling next week. So I brought me five shilling next week. He said, have you got your license? I said, what license? You've got to have a racing license. Right. I said, well, where do we apply for one? Bring five shilling next week again. So <laughs> another five shilling. So they said, right, you've entered two races, one on the Halton circuit, which is around Halton, Runcorn, Witness. All right, okay. That's the week before the division champs. So we went out to it. I remember the whole day. Um, it was up about six o'clock. We rode out 20 miles of the race. Uh, I got dropped second lap. I didn't know what was going on. I thought, oh, should I save me energy? So I ended up at the back of the bunch, out the back, kept going, finished it. And then we said, it's only like 12 o'clock, half 12. What are we going to do? We're not going up. We rode to the bungalow in Wales. Really? Right. Okay. So it was 15 and a half and I did 120 mile that day wow. on the bike. At the age of? 15. Wow, great. So, great. <laughs> goes to the club next night. How, how did you go on in the races? Well, the other two guys, oh, well, I was in the bunch, I was this. Oh, I said, how do you go on? I said, oh, I got dropped second time. Oh, Preston Brook. Uh, did you finish? I, I finished. Oh, that's good. You've got to finish. So, uh, well, you got the division champs next week and it's on Cobb's Brow, seven laps of a hill. And then it finishes on Ashurst, which is a, a, a bigger hill. Okay. So they said, well, look, when you get to Cobb's Brow, get near the front. And then if you drop him back, you'll be in the middle of the peloton, the bunch, and you might be okay. Well, I lasted, I think it was four or five laps out of seven. Right. And when I got dropped, I was with about four or five others. So I was happy being with them. And then it finished on the top of Hashes. And um, I wasn't last. I beat right. a couple. So yeah. I was happy that I wasn't last. Then uh, the license hadn't arrived, but I had a note off the registrar from Merseyside to say he sent off. This is BLRC. This is leaguey days of the old guys were, were steeped in British League of Racing cyclists. Okay. And um, th they said, you'll have to go to the registrar and he'll give you a cover note, which you hand in at the race to say you've applied for the license and it hasn't turned up. So we did that. <clears throat> and then a couple of days after the second race, I get a letter from the BLRC saying, you can't race, you're too young. Here's your five shilling back. <laughs> no way. Wow. Okay. Come back next year when you're 16. Right. Okay. So, <clears throat> so, so you've had a taster for it there. So I had a taster and I was too young. I was, mm. But there was no schoolboy racing. But the thing is, you were doing all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was no schoolboy racing in those days. You right. were a junior or nothing. Yeah. Okay. So um, I, I, I got into the juniors. Did so I, how, 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 I'm intrigued myself regards to how, how did you get on the year later? Well, a year later was 1959. Okay. I was 16. 
still green. Right. Rode out to races in Manchester. We got the train to Manchester. Rode to um, near Glossop. Yes. Rode a race quite on, hilly around Glossop. Rode yeah. a race on the Easter Sunday. Right. And then, well, we rode from Manchester. I don't know how far it was to to Glossop. And then I rode a fifty mile race. Then we rode home all the way back to Liverpool. Wow. <clears throat> and then I rode about six races that year. The best was ninth. Which finished on the Horseshoe Pass right, in okay. about the August September of fifty nine. Right. Then that winter, um, Kenny Hill, who was a, a international at the time, said, uh, "I'm going to do some weight training in the winter." Said to Billy Perkins, another guy who had an international, uh, "Do you want to come with me?" So I, I went, "Yeah, all right." Where was it? it? Was about three mile away from home. So he said, "Right, well, we do about two or three months of this weight training, and you had to have two or three there because." They had no apparatus. Right. And you had to have three to put the weights on the back of the guy who was doing squats. Oh, right. And right, to right, hand okay. it up on the bench press. Right. So Pre you, couldn't, old school you couldn't have... <laughs> there was no apparatus there. There was just a bar and a load of weights. Right. And <clears throat> I... We did, we did... I think we did press behind neck, curl, bench press and squats. And right. that was it. Four. Okay. But... The squats helped me a massive, massive okay. amount. And the first race in 1960 was Morecambe Promenade. Okay. And I remember going up with one of the lads on the train because no one had cars or anything. And he said, uh, oh, we got the start sheet. So we went and looked at the course and it was up and down Morecambe Prom. So we rolled up and down a couple of times. And I stopped with this guy, Nobby, who in 1960, I think he was fourth or fifth in the national champs round Buxton. And he was really strong. And we looked at the start sheet. There was a preem every lap. Right. So I, I said as a joke, I said, well, look, it's three pound first prize. So I'll go for that. And the best prize of the lap is a Brooks saddle, which was probably worth two or three quid. Right. So I said, well, I'll be happy if I get that preem and I get the win. And I got them. Really, I won brilliant. the race <clears throat> and I got the, the saddle. It's the Brooks saddle. It was the Brooks saddle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was over the moon. Anyway, there's another race next day and I won that. Fantastic. So okay. I was just, whoa, never had a place before. Yeah. Two wins, but never got another win all year. Right. But, but I mean, you have had some wins, haven't you? How many wins have you actually had? Up to now. Well, when well, I started. I know, because the... there's quite a lot about Pete on the internet. It's over 300 wins. Isn't when, it? when I was 72. I decided I'm going to have to stop. Right. And I'm sorry, how old are you now? 80. So Pete's 80. <coughs> he's still riding his bicycle to oh, this yeah. day. So, yeah. But not definitely. very fast. No, okay. And um, I, I got those two wins. I never won another race then that year, but I had lots of seconds and thirds. And then I went back to Morecambe a year later and I won again on the Saturday, right. but I didn't win on the Sunday. Brook saddle. Yeah, no, Brook saddle. I, can't remember. <laughs> okay. I don't know whether I sold that off or, right. or kept it, but I did ride a Brook saddle. Mm. And then I won a road race up in the Lake District near Morecambe around the Truffle Bowl. And, and that was me four wins as a junior. Right. And then, of course, baptism of fire, then going to senior. Okay. But I did win three, three wins in my first year as a senior. Okay. And then the second year, I had five wins. Um, 1965 I had nine wins 66 I had 17 okay then I came down a bit I was riding more star trophies I had 10 and 11 then I won the nationals and then I had 23 the week the year after right so you won so, the national 68, 68 yes. then I won the star trophy 69 and 70 brilliant okay and uh, up to now well today because I'm finished I won 366 366 I won, races. I won 365, I said, every day of the year. And then some smart Alex said, what about a league? Oh, yeah. So I had to go back and win another one. Really? Wow. <laughs> and it, it, the, the thing is, though, then obviously you've, you've got all, all that success regards to the racing. What I had noticed as well, you uh, had your own brand bicycle. Was that on the success of your racing? Yeah, or? well, on the success of the race. Well, the, <laughs> the thing was, when I was racing from sort of 65 up to 71 i'd only worked in the summers because okay. i kept getting the sack the, right okay the, 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 the oh, one, because of the, the side i'd thing, say look I, I need a week to go to the southwest yeah okay you can have that uh, i need two weeks for the milk race well you only got two weeks holiday right so he went 
well, you've had a week. You can't so have two weeks. I said, <laughs> well, I've got to go. I'm, I've been selected for the milk race. It was an ambition. Well, you won't get paid for the second week. I said, I don't care. Right. So off I went, rode the milk race. The week after was the Manx International on the right, Isle of Man, okay. which had entered. Right. So I thought, I'm not going to get away with asking for time off. So I goes over to the Isle of Man on the Thursday to race on the Friday. And my uncle rang up and said, he's not well. Okay. So I goes into work on the Monday. And in the race, I'd finished the milk race and I was up for riding the Manx and doing a good ride. And I snapped me crank out training on the Tuesday night before I went. Okay, as you do. And got home, put another crank on, went the Isle of Man. First lap in the Isle of Man, I snapped the other crank. So I had to get a, a spare off the team right, cars, okay. which was a rubbish old bike because everyone rode them. And um, got to the, the end of the lap and um, shouted to... Some mates. My bike's coming on the team car. Put another crank on for me. Right. So they, the team car had radioed through and said, Pete Matthews wants a bike. Can you get him a bike at the pits? So the lads from Birkenhead North End got me one of the lads' bikes. Said, oh, he's, he's near the size to him. So I gets his bike. And this guy had ridden a crit the night before at Castletown and he put the inside ring at 50. <sighs> The inside chain ring was 50 54. And where are you? You're actually going around the island. <coughs> I've, got, I've got two laps to go, including Snay Fell. Right, okay. Uh, Snay Fell is the, is the mountain, the mountain which is like yeah. 2,000 foot high. Yeah. So I get on the mountain, I'm thinking, oh, this bottom gear. The bottom gear was way, way over right. what I was used to. But they said, put another crank on Matthew's bike for the third lap. So I had to jump off again and get my own bike back. Okay. And I got my own bike back and I finished 17th, which was really disappointing because I would have been top 10 without all the trouble. Most of the time I was out the back chasing. Right. But when I got to work on the Monday, I just bounces in. The boss says, uh, oh, hello there. Good morning. I said, hey, good morning. He said, um, are you all right? Are you well now? I went, yeah, yes, thanks. I'm okay. And he said, uh, oh, well, um, at the weekend, you're on the Isle of Man, weren't you? I went, oh, not me. Really? <laughs> he said, well, one of the customers saw you. And I thought, one of the customers, we were closed Saturday, Sunday, because right. it was a delivery drive. I thought, we're closed Saturday, Sunday. They couldn't have seen me on the Isle of Man unless they rang up and said, your van driver's on the Isle of Man in a bike race, which is unlikely. So I said, no, it wasn't me. It must have been someone else. Well, my name was in the Liverpool Echo. Uh. <laughs> Finished 17th, snapped a crank, had bad luck. So he read the echo and saw all the details. I, I couldn't lie. Yeah. Anyway, when we come to the Friday, he went, oh, there's your wages and there's your cards. <laughs> that was that. That was that. So it got, I didn't, didn't mind. I won mm. another half dozen races. And um, it happened every year for the next five years. Right. And then, um, must have been 1971, I was delivering school meals. I used to be back out, finish the school meals, half past two, I'd go and do an hour on my bike. I'd drop the van in, I'd go and do another two hours on my bike. And I could go to pictures at night without having to worry on the chain gang because yeah. it was finished early. Yes. And then I went into Jim sewing shop, which I used to do my deliveries, and he just said, I'm selling the shop. He said, in fact, uh, there's a guy out of his club, the Merseyside Wheelers, he said he's having it. Right. I went, oh, great. And I used to go in the bike shops and have a cup of tea with them. Yeah. And um, went into, I used to go in Harry Quinn's, Eddie Sowins, Jim Sowins. I used to go and have a cup of tea. I, I, in fact, I'd make the tea because they'd be busy. I'd right. So I'd put the kettle on, make cover. And um, I'm talking to Jim and he went, oh, the fella's backed out. Right. He couldn't get a mortgage. So I, I said, what, what, like, he said, well, the shop, I'm selling the shop. I'm 65. I want to retire. Um, and he's backed out. I went, oh, okay. Goes home, talks to my uncle and my parents. And I said, Jim Sowens is selling the shop. I'd love that. Right. So this, you know, we, we, I said, look, I could be interested. <clears throat> and I had saved because I never, I never went anywhere. I, right, I, I okay. never drank. I never smoked. It was all bike, bike, bike. By that time, I was getting my bikes. Yeah. And I uh, thought, well, I've got enough for a deposit. 
and um, we eventually struck a deal up with him because I couldn't get a mortgage. They, they wouldn't mortgage shops. Right, okay. So we did a mortgage with Jim, agreed on it, and um, I said, look, don't tell anyone I'm getting it because I would have hated to have thought that I said, I'm getting a bike shop, and then it fell through. Right, yeah, okay. <clears throat> I just didn't want that. I said, until it's signed, don't tell anyone. So I was taking over at Easter 72, which I think was April the 4th. Okay. And um, we got to February, and he said, I'm going to have to tell people. I said, why? Um, because we'd, we'd signed it. And he said, because... The, the reps, like the camp I'd rep and that, they want right. to know whose name ah, to change right, the accounts okay. to. Right. So I've, I've, I've got to tell them. And I said, right, we'll leave it till next week or whatever. So I used to go to work, delivering in these school meals, get me van out. I used to start at past seven, but you never got any meals till you got into the kitchen at 10 o'clock or something. Right. I used to go into Harry Quinn's, knock on the side door. Harry was in at half seven. I'd knock on the side door, he'd open up, I'd go up, make two cups of tea, and I'd help him. Right. Doing forks and filing up and stuff on the frames. Okay. And um, I, people were saying to me, lo, I'm going to say loads, probably half a dozen or ten people said to me, Jim Sowen's shop's been sold. And I'd go, has he? Go, yeah. I wondered who's got it. And I'd go, Brilliant. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> The well, first fella I told was Harry Quinn okay. because I'd, I'd go in <clears throat> and um, Harry says to me, Jim's shop sold, you know. I said, is he? He went, yeah, but no one knows who's got it. No one knows who's bought it. I went, I have. He went, his face went, what? <laughs> I said, I have. He went, what do you know about bikes? Come in, I'm going to bring with you. <laughs> I said, well, um, 30 and I've been doing bikes since I was 13 mm. I said I've always built my own bikes up you know got the frame put the headset bracket yeah. put a lot stuck my tubs on changed my sprockets I said I've done everything I've been mechanic on races I've done I know about bikes he went well VAT comes in next year I said well I was good at maths at school and that was it. And and Addy sort of fell out with me, and right. all the other bike shops fell out with me. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's um, competition. <clears throat> yeah. It's, um... But the thing is, there was only Harry Quinn's, who was a shop before Jim Sowins. Right. Okay. In Liverpool. All the others had come after. So, I mean, your thing then, you, you had the knowledge of who were the frame builders and things like that for you to actually get the frames well, in had, and put I your had, name I on. Because... I had my own bike then, didn't I? I had yeah, that's what I mean. Plus a spare frame. Yeah. So I just got it. Decal, I got repainted right. with Pete Matthews. Yeah. And then I got a frame builder. Right, because yeah, because I, even to this day, I still see the odd Pete Matthews going oh, through yeah. eBay, things yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. So. <clears throat> well, I wanted my own bike. I wasn't going to yeah. advertise anyone else. And um, <coughs> I got my own bikes made mm. and uh, decaled up, and then I was selling them. Right. And I suppose I was a competition to Harry yeah. and the other bike shops. So that's frames. you know, known as the master... Wheel builder. Well, yeah. So how, how did you go from your frames to, to doing the wheels? And, and first of all, before we get on to the wheels, who who have you, you built some wheels for some people? Can you name a few out names off it? I mean, obviously, the, the one was the Robert Miller. Robert Miller, Sean Mel Yates, Pippa. Tony Doyle, John Woodburn, Lands End, John O'Groats. Right, okay. He, well, broke okay. Them, he broke them on the wheels first, 20 spoke wheels. Right. No one believed he'd work, and that was the longest record in the country. Okay. Um, Sid Barris, uh, Mandy Jones. Gosh, I shouldn't have made a list. The 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 uh, Ian Camish. Yeah. Camish used to do record breaking for Rally. He was BAR about nine years on the run. I made him some super yeah. record white wheels. And it's interesting how you actually got into it because it was quite organic, quite natural. Because you were just telling me uh, it all started from you actually truing your first <laughs> wheel up, if you want to share that with... with... <clears throat> well, when I got me rally, that it was the love of my life. In fact, it was in the parlour or, or the front room of the house against the piano. Right, OK. <clears throat> my mum used to go mad saying, let's bite you, brought water in on you, bite your mug guards are dripping. I'll put something under the mum, I'll put a towel under or something. And um, I just absolutely loved it. Everything, every penny I got, I spent on gears and... Dynamo saddlebag, 
you mention it, I had to have it on that bike. And I say, started saving up then for a custom built frame. But on Sunday night, I'd come home, I'd polish the bike. There was nothing on the telly. I'd go and look at it, sit in the pile, I'd just looking at me bike. Went round the wheels, checked them out, thought, hmm, some of those spokes are a bit looser than the others. I'll tighten them up with my little Mafac, Mafac tool kit, okay. which had a spoke key in it. Tightened them up, thought, that's it. Went like that, trying to get the wheel to turn it wouldn't. Both wheels were jammed. So the bike shop was on the next corner, went round, said, my wheels won't turn. No, he said, because you messed them up, leave the bike with me. He fixed it. And then... <coughs> As I got into the racing and I wanted 28 spoke wheels for myself as a junior, there was no one that could build them. And I bought some. I won't say where I bought them, but they broke. Okay. They collapsed. And 28 spokes were just for time trials or track. And I ended up with 36s or 32s. And um, when I was riding my... 32s and 36s even those were coming out of true right and you can't if you're in a stage race you can't go to your local bike shop and get your wheels true so i started to learn how to true wheels myself okay and by the time i was 19 20 i was reasonable at doing them yeah so when i got the shop i wanted everything the best and i wanted the lightest wheels because i used to say you can cheat legally okay. with good wheels. Right, okay. Because the um, they're the revolving weight. <coughs> and if you've got good tubulars, which I used to buy silk tubulars, which were expensive, but, uh, you know, I loved my bike, so I bought them. And if you had the best wheels, it was an advantage. And I started using 28s when I got the shop, and I went to 24s. And I wanted less and less because no one would believe 24s would work for road racing or even in some time trials. So I rode them, others rode them, and I gave a stay-through guarantee. And I wow. thought, right, everyone's charging when you go back your first couple of rides. They used to say, come back in two wheels, you get one free through. The guys weren't coming back because after the dummy on wheels, I did this race stress testing thing okay. to see how you could improve the wheels. And it worked. They weren't coming back. Right, so I really? put, in, put in Cycling Weekly, Pete Matthews wheels, world's best wheels, stay true guarantee. And they'd say, well, what does that mean? I'd say, well, if you come out of true, I'll, I'll true them for nothing forever for you. And one other shop did have a go for about three weeks and then he knocked it on the head. Right. So <clears throat> I, I just got a name for it. And eventually, then the, the pros were coming. They wanted special ones. Robert wanted them for climbing. Um, Sean Yates wanted them because I made him a pair of 40 40. 40 really? spokes wow. front, okay. 40 wow. spokes back because his wheels wouldn't stay true, the pro wheels. Right, what just purely for the power that you're putting down? Oh, yeah, really? Okay, yeah, yeah. He was an absolutely animal beast, Sean. Right, he was so straight. Tow the Tour de France. Yeah, yeah. He'd, he'd have a hundred guys behind him, <laughs> yeah. 30 miles an hour <laughs> for 10 miles. Yeah, and I, I did wheels for him. And then Tony Doyle wanted him for the track, and um, it was a bit of a long, convoluted tail. But he, he asked me to do some, he said, he said, Have you got any hubs in? Um, I want some track wheels. Will you do me some track wheels? I said, of course I will. So he said, um, the thing is, I'm sponsored by Jora Race, but they haven't got any hubs. Have you got any hubs you can lend me till the hubs come? So I said, yeah, I'll have a look. You know, wait till I get to the, the workshop. I'll check up, see what I've got. So I rang him back. I said, yeah, he was sponsored by Shimano. I said, I've got some Suntour large flange track hubs. They're identical. Right. But the 28 hole, oh, I can't have them, he said. I said, why not? He said, because the um, the six-day mafia say that you've all got to ride 36 hole wheels. Right, okay. For strength, for crashes. Six-day mafia was the <coughs> body, the Well, it's the body. guys, the, the guys, guys who yeah. raced. Right, they, okay. They'd say, you can't ride flimsy equipment. You had to have the best because if you fell off in the six-day and you ruined the... 
maybe a couple of months of their right. earnings. Yeah. So he had, to, you know, the, the the thing was, it was 36s. I said, I can't do your 36s. I've got 28s. I said, I've got some really strong rims and they'll be three times as strong as your 36s. I'll do you a pair. Try them. If you don't want them, send them back mm. for whatever. So I built the wheels, 28s, and... Um, he had them about a week or two and he rang up. He said, I want another three pair. Brilliant. That's really I said, cool. they all right? He said, all right. He said, <laughs> I never did anything think it's passed in me. Like, and as strong. Fantastic. And <clears throat> it will be a year or two back. And there's a guy who worked for British Cycling in Manchester. And I got to chatting to him. I, I can't remember what it was over. And we were chatting and he said, uh, there was a jumble arm at the velodrome right. last month. Yeah. I said, oh, I said, and you talking to me now, it's reminded me, there was a few pair of Pete Matthews track wheels, he said, and they had Sonder class continental tubulars on. <laughs> I said, what? I said, I built some of them for Tony Doyle. He said, that's who they were from. Right, wow. And they went for £150 a pair. Really? Okay. I said, I'd have bought a lot off you. Right, okay. The tubs were... Yeah, <laughs> about ninety pound each. Really, these track tubs. Wow. So I, I did, the, and there's there's lots of other bikes. I was doing them for Mod Yourself Pro Team. I did them for the Rally Pro Team. I did them for the Peugeot Mountain Bike Team. I did them for the wow. Rally Mountain Bike Team. Right. David Baker and Tim Gould. Mm. And I did I did mechanic for Rally one of the Grundy races in Scotland. And David Baker came second to Tim Gould, who was riding for Peugeot. And I was doing his wheels, so he was second. A year later, I was doing them for Tim Gould for Peugeot. Right, well. And the right. rally fellow won. Right. So, <laughs> but whatever. No, it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, the thing is, the reason why our paths have, have crossed is I was recommended Pete because we're doing the, um, a beautiful Pinarello build. Um, so we've got some wheels built by your good self yeah. but what really interested me was uh pete had asked me my height and also my weight your was age. It? Yeah, and my age as well so can yeah. you just explain a little bit <coughs> well the, the, the things i've said over the years if you if people go in bikes they say oh um will you get me a pair of wheels for christmas dad or something like that and they go yeah yeah uh where, where, where'd you get your bike from x number xy bike shop so they go down they say i want a pair of wheels for me lad for Christmas, how much do you want to spend? 400 quid, 500 quid. They go, yeah, okay, is he on camp? I go, Shimano. Well, he's, he's on Shimano. Uh, right, well, I've got this pair of um, camp bike XYZs or a pair of Shimano ABCs. Um, oh, well, I'll have, you know, the ABC or the XYZ. <coughs> the guy in the shop doesn't know whether the lad is 8 at 18 stone, mm, yeah, whether, so. whether he's a schoolboy yeah. or he's a, a giant. Or whatever. So <clears throat> I I had to determine um, whether the wheels would stand up to the guy. Oh, another guy I built wheels for, and I built him a whole bike, Alexi Sale. Right, okay. Well, okay. The comic off the telly. Yeah. But he lived within a mile of my shop originally. Okay. And his mate, Kenny Jones, who's since died, was um, um, a manager of the Eurythmics. Oh, and, wow. okay. and Alexi right. and he went from Alexi to the Arrhythmics and then Kenny and I were going to go to Italy one year and I broke my ankle and he couldn't go he said can't go with you because Bob Dylan's coming over I've got to look after Bob Dylan and I had a broken ankle yeah. and I went to, to Milan for about four days came back Kenny picked me up at the airport took me back to his house said stay the night and I said no I, I, I want to get home and in his house, Slade. No way. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. I missed that one. <clears throat> so I did the bike for Alexi. Right. And then he, well, he I don't know what he had, but whatever his wheels were, they, they stood up to his weight and stuff. But he was about 17, 18 stone. Right, right, so, okay. you know, you, you, you can get an eight stone guy who will find every pothole <laughs> and go down it and smash wheels up. Yeah, that's just how you're actually right about it. You get a 15 about, stone yeah. guy yeah. who'll glide over them yeah. and he'll be okay. So I thought, right, the height, you know, if he's six foot four, mm -hmm. chances are he's not going to be nine stone. Okay. So he's six foot four. He's 16 stone. 
What's he going to use them for? What width tyres is he going to use? Right. How old is he? If he's 20, he can tear the bike apart. Yeah. If he's like me, 80, he's not going to be putting much oh, pressure right, on the pedal. Okay. So the height, the age, the weight went into the melting pot. Okay. Then I would decide how many spokes, what rims, if he's going to race, whether yeah. they be aero or flat or what, and of course the price. Mm. And everything added up. And I just became known for building wheels. Yeah, you're just putting a bit more attention to the detail like, well, the, in regards the, to the rider itself. Yeah, and, because yeah. I didn't know anyone who had spent enough t or spent as much time experimenting and doing wheels. Right. There, there was frame builders, you know, they, 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 they were making the wheelbases shorter and shorter and mm. all kinds of gimmicks on frames. But there was no one doing the wheels. But the frames had to be complemented with mm. wheels. Yeah, 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 for sure. And of course, you'd, you'd read in the magazines, oh, so-and-so, so-and-so, he was in the brake and his back wheel collapsed and he lost the race. Yeah. And like Mod Yourself was a pro team. Mickey Morrison was the only rider. And Mickey rode the national champs at Harrogate one year. And he was king of the mountains. He got all the preams. And on the last lap, his back wheels collapsed. Right. And he didn't finish. So okay. he didn't even get King of the Mountains because he never crossed the line. Yeah. So he, he, his, his boss said, will you build Mickey some wheels? So I built him. Then he had a full team and he built all the teams. Wow. And every winter... He built some wheels, eh? Yeah, every winter, the Mod Yourself van, it was, um, they used to do not central eating, but air conditioning or something. That was right. the company. And every winter, like October, when the racing finished... John Wilshaw, the boss of Ringo Peter, say, yeah, John here, yeah, are you? Can you take all the wheels? I'd say, yeah. He'd send the van up full of wheels. Wow. And I'd get them and I'd say, that needs rebuilding, that needs binning, right. that needs new bearings. He used to just say, look, just do what you need to do. I know what you need to do. I'd say, that needs new rims or that pair needs binning. Yeah. He'd say, just do it and send me the bill. Right. And he did. And then did them for all the mods yourself. Too. And they had some big hitters right. in, the, in their team. So for anyone watching, what advice or hints, tips could you give on somebody starting or wanting to build their own wheels? That's <coughs> well, where the minefield is. Uh, the, yeah. the thing is, these days, it's not as easy as when I started. Because when I started... Um, in 56, throwing them and making a mess of them. And in 72, when I got the shop and started to really build properly, there wasn't any company that made their own wheels. Right, okay. Everything was done from the bike shop. Right. So you yes. had to rely <clears throat> on the bike shop. Certain bikes got, certain bike shops got a reputation for being good wheel building. And some of them, a lot of them, got a reputation for being a rubbish wheel builders. So now, practically I would think 80% of shops do mm. not have a wheel builder no no so no. and I can't see anyone making a living no it's out pure of passion and stuff wheels. like that if and you're, also if you're going to be passionate about it nearly all the people that do it are cyclists yes so they look at or they'll buy a book okay there are certain books out Right. Some of them are a complete load of rubbish <laughs> right, okay. because they get it wrong. Yeah. Others are okay, but it's all experimentation. And if you've got enough money to keep buying rims and spokes and hubs and working and all the apparatus that you need mm. to build them, the jigs, the, the dishing tools and all this kind of stuff, then have a go. But I can't see anyone making a living solely on no, it's purely like passion. It's, I mean, the thing yeah. is, is most of the views yeah. here will be, it'll be either restorations or yeah. it will be that specialist <coughs> well, they, thing, they, which, and as you say, it's it's such a shame because it's such a dying it's skill. It's a dying art. Yeah. Well, a, Harry Quinn, when he retired from the shop in Liverpool, he went to live in Wales. Right. And he started running frame building courses. Yes. And you went down for a week. Right. Stayed there. <coughs> and together, you built your own frame. Right. Okay. So Harry started doing that. 
Right. But I'm not interested in doing no, that. No, I'm not interested <laughs> in doing be that. Doing that. Uh, I, mean, I mean, Pete, you, you do offer a wheel building service. I'm still you? building wheels yes. and hopefully I'll build them forever as long as I can. Right. So details for that can be found on our website or I'll actually put some details in the description of this you video. You can put my phone numbers down and they can ring me. Uh, we don't have a website at the moment. No. But um, anyone can ring me, have a chat. We okay. can discuss what they want. Um, height, age, wage. Height, age and weight is still a paramount, um, most important part of it. Okay. And the other thing is... Um, where are you going to go if a guy wants a pair for doing a raid Pyrenean? There'll be a damn sight difference if they want to do Paris Roubaix and Tour de right. Flanders. Yes, understand. <clears throat> and the other factor is the price. Yes, because now, now the thing is, you actually offer. You've got some. You've got your own rims. You've got hubs yeah, here yeah, as well. Yeah, so, well, the, but I, then you also offer the service got, of what I have got is I've got quite a few sets of retro hubs. Right. Okay. Interesting. For really specialist stuff like Mavic. Right. Which someone said you cannot get Mavic hubs. No, no, so you actually have the Mavic hubs, do you? Right. I've got some brand new sets of Mavic hubs. Um, I've got a couple of pair of brand new Super Record um, screw on, and uh, some Strong Light, which we used by Hino and Le Monde Right. Okay. In the eighty five, eighty six tours, they were made by Mavic, I think. Yeah. But the seal cartridges. Right. And I've got other hubs. Wow. Which, which, you know, you, 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 well, they may be able to get if you go on eBay for the. Yeah, six it's months. made a, a small fortune, and as yeah, you say, the, yeah, the searching yeah. for six. But Mavic, well. Mavic hubs were really, really, you know, the rims I didn't rate half the time because mm. they, they basically shunned me off when I spoke to them. But their hubs were really nice, and they were seal bearings. Right. And I've got some sets of them, and I've got some sets of those which they, which I did get specially made, like twenties and twenty fours. Okay. So I've got some specialist some of ones well. of those. Fantastic. Well, if yeah. you're in the market for some wheels, you know who to get hold of. Yep. Thank you so much, Pete, oh, for your time. It's a, it's a, Thanks very much. It's an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and bye for now. Cheers.